I've been playing around with NDI software for a while and uh, one of the ideas I had was for a gradient background generator which could send a graphics feed over NDI and this is the first version it uh, allows you to set four different colors one in each corner and then it'll just do a gradient split um, you can choose to have a few different ways of uh, splitting up the screen so vertical split horizontal split um, mirroring so you get four basic patterns um, obviously you can change any of the individual colors um, you can also store presets so effectively that's just using two colors um, and by splitting that in different ways you get different sort of effects uh, you can do something like that where you just change one color and leave two the same um, final thing you can do is you can well final two things you can overlay a cloud pattern on top of it and you can also make the colors rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise uh, if i speed it up you'll see the effect so the idea of this is that the NDI signal gets transmitted you can see it there being picked up by um, the Newtek NDI monitor and you can pull it into any application uh, if we open vmix then you can see that you can pull it in as an NDI source in vmix and use it as a background for anything you like if you were chroma keying you, know, you can chroma key yourself on top of it um, a little while ago I saw that someone had posted in one of the Facebook groups that they'd use this to create uh, a sort of abstract pattern where they'd got five different instances of the pattern generator and then in vmix they'd overlaid them to create a multi-layer pattern and they've scaled each one and rotated it um, so I've just recreated that now and this is this is my version of it and one of the things that struck me when I was looking at it was that it's rather geometric with all the square edges and it would perhaps be more interesting if you could um, have a, a graduated soft edge on it um, and make different shapes rather than just being stuck with a fixed rectangle so i've been having a play around with it and i've added some new features this is the new version and what you can do with this is to add a transparency mask if you go to load alpha you can get a shape and you can add that and if you enable use mask you can see in the uh, new tick app the checkerboard bit is transparency so you can invert the transparency and when we bring this into vmix what used to be simply uh, a pattern with rectangular edges if we uh, turn on the mask you can now blur all those edges together or if you invert the mask um, you can basically make some more interesting sort of shapes than you could previously and of course you can see things behind the mask if we were to uh, load something else up cut that use this as a an overlay then um, all becomes slightly more interesting so as well as being able to add alpha channel masks uh, something else that occurred to me fairly late on I thought might be a bit fun uh, was to be able to animate the cloud overlay we've now got two types of cloud pattern there's a, a milder pattern which was the default 
in the original one and there's now a second pattern that's a bit of a stronger and with either of those you can now set a scroll speed so you can make it look a bit more like steam rising or uh, smoke so we can scroll that up the screen and you can use that in combination with the mask. So there's all sorts of ways you can use masks. You basically just draw these in uh, a program like Photoshop or any, any art program you like. Um, it will load um, a few different formats, bitmaps, GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs and TIFFs. Um, although all, all the ones I've got here are grayscale, it'll, it, it'll load any kind of image, it'll scale it to fill the screen. Uh, if it's colour, it'll simply use the brightness component out of that colour. And if it's an image that has its own alpha channel, you can even choose to use the alpha channel that's within the image. Um, and I've not really got a good example here. Maybe this one, if I open that. Okay. Um, yes, that one's a little bit strange. If you just look at the main RGB part of it, it's not necessarily what you expect. Uh, if you want to see what the alpha channel is, that's the alpha channel. If you click on use alpha channel, then it will use the alpha channel as the mask. Um, and this got me thinking that you can do some interesting things if you make up text captions. So here's that same image which I made up to include transparency. So uh, it's a PNG, it's been made in Photoshop, big white letters, black outline and a drop shadow. And then I've also made a version of it in which you just have the white text and I've put it on a black background and if we load that into the gradient generator and don't say use mask alpha don't reveal alpha so it's it's an image uh, that just has the center part of the text and if we use that as a mask what you have is just the inner bit of text and if you uh, we need to put this against some kind of background so let's just cut to that for example okay there we go um, if you overlay the color text that's coming from the gradient generator and put that as the next layer up so and put that as overlay three then that will perfectly key where the white of the letters were. It's basically the same image, uh, but we've got a coloured version of it. And you can use whatever effects you like here, so we can do a different sort of split, get a different colour distribution, uh, which can make it a little bit more interesting. And we've also got the cloud effect moving on that a little bit faster and in that version you've just got the text uh, completely um, solidly ap applied in other words it's the same amount of, uh, of color being applied everywhere I've also made another version of the mask in which uh, there we go open the next one so in this one I've kind of shaded the white text a little bit, made it darker, I've just got an airbrush and darkened bits of it. So the effect of that is that the colour isn't applied as evenly, so the white shows through a bit more and it looks a bit like um, it's sort of catching some kind of reflection, some kind of highlight. That makes it a little bit more interesting. And you can go a step further, you can add something to the mask. So I've created another one where I've added uh, 
a graduated area of white top and bottom. So now you've got a, a bit of the colour coming through top and bottom of the screen, plus it's overlaid into the text. Take that away, you can just see how that's, that's being overlaid. It all starts to get a bit more interesting. The, the more creative you are with the alpha channels, um, and the more you do multi-layering, let's say you, know, you add your a chroma key over the front of that, uh, you can play the video in the background, um, could make quite a good little opening sequence or something where you want to describe what's coming up next. Um, and you, of course, you could use the uh, multi-version of it once you start doing things like adding that in behind. We've now got, take this right back, three, two, one. So you can start with a background image. Um, scroll that back a little bit. You've got this. If you then key that over the top, um, you can then add in the uh, title text. So that would be number two. And then you've got the coloured version of the title text. You add that in as number three. And you add your foreground character. Set all that going. So yeah, you can have quite a lot of fun with this. Yeah, if I if I invert the transparency, let's see what happens there. You start, you get a completely different effect. So that's on overlay one. If we add the text on overlay two, add the character there and play the video. Let's have a look at uh, a different type of mask. Um, here's one where we've got a kind of side to side effect. If we look how this mask would work just with the basic overlay and the multi version of it, as soon as you put the mask on, you start getting a, a completely different sort of look. And indeed, if you invert the mask, you get a completely different sort of look again. So that could work quite well as an overlay. If you put, um, if we cut to that, we overlay, well, if you just overlay a single one, play that. You get that sort of effect, or take that one away. If you want something more complex, then you've got the kind of multi version of that. You invert the transparency, it's uh, completely different again. So there's all, all sorts of ways, really, that it can be used to create interesting patterns. Uh, and of course you can use more than one of these gradient background generators. I mean all the all the things I've been showing you so far have been done just by using a single instance of the gradient generator with one type of pattern, one type of mask. But you can run multiple copies of it simultaneously and each one can be different colors, different patterns, uh, different masks. All the different permutations can be applied to each instance. If you bring all those in and combine them all together in VMix, you can make quite an interesting kind of background pattern sequence, which is useful for putting behind um, graphics, statistics, things that you might want to introduce partway through a program, or sh showing a bit of pre recorded video like in a, a sort of coming up next sequence. Um, play that over a graphic background. So all sorts of different ways you can use it. It's really 
only limited by by your imagination. So I hope people find lots of uh, interesting ways to use it and I look forward to seeing some of them.